This is a demonstration video showing how to make a basic wire wound electric furnace along with a zinc melting demonstration. The materials you will need to make our basic wire wound electric furnace include some clay plant pots, some nichrome wire also known as resistance wire, some vermiculite and loft insulation, some fire cement and a power supply to drive the nichrome wire. We start by folding over the end of our nichrome wire three times to create a length approximately 8 inches in length which we twist together. As this is going to be our electrical terminal we want this to be of low resistance and not to heat up when we put a current through the length of nichrome wire. Then we secure one end of our nichrome wire to the end of our plant pot using some temporary electrical insulation tape to help secure it. We then wind our nichrome wire around the circumference of the plant pot creating a spiral along the length. What we're trying to achieve is a uniform spacing between the coils without the coils actually physically contacting each other as this will best promote uniform heating. After a couple of attempts of winding the coils we found that two thin strips of double sided tape really help to hold the coils in place. Now with all the coils in place we now apply some fire cement to the outside of our pot to permanently hold the coils in place and reflect the heat into the pot. The black PVC tape, by the way, is removed before the fire cement sets. With the outside of our pot fully covered with fire cement, we now need to allow the fire cement to dry, as any residual water would convert to steam on heating and could potentially crack the fire cement or pot. Depending on temperature, drying with the fire cement can take over a week so don't rush this, it's very important that it is dry. To contain the clay pot we're going to electrically heat, we're going to use a larger clay pot. We're going to cover the hole in the bottom using a piece of broken porcelain. Now we're going to add some vermiculite into the base of the pot. This happens to be an excellent thermal insulator. We now insert the pot that we're going to heat into the middle of the larger pot and pack vermiculite around the outside. Next we hook up a power supply to the ends of our nichrome wire and using a thermocouple inside the centre pot we can measure the temperature increase as we apply current to our heating coil. Now for further demonstration purposes we're going to show melting some scrap zinc into an ingot. The scrap zinc we've harvested from some wheel balancing weights. We've loaded these up into a stainless steel pot which we've placed in the centre of our furnace. We place our thermocouple to measure temperature between our inner clay pot and stainless steel crucible. Now using some rock wool loft insulation we cover the top of our furnace to help prevent heat loss. The melting point of pure zinc is around 420 degrees Celsius. But we're going to wait until the temperature is around 500 degrees to allow a little bit of superheat to make sure it's molten when we pour the molten zinc and to allow for thermal lag from where the thermocouple is measuring temperature and the actual temperature inside the stainless steel crucible. And when the measured temperature reached 500 degrees Celsius, we turned the power off of the coils, removed the loft insulation, using some tongs we picked up the crucible, and by holding a hacksaw blade over the end of the crucible when we were pouring, we managed to remove a lot of the dross and pour a pretty pure zinc ingot into a dry stainless steel mould.
After allowing our mould to cool, we've removed our zinc and it looks like we've successfully produced a nice ingot of zinc from some scrap wheel balancing weights. Next we try to collect any residual zinc left over from our initial casting. It appears that we were fairly efficient with our first pouring and what we harvest is maybe a couple of grams of zinc and the remainder is dross which mostly consists of zinc oxide and the steel tabs left over from the wheel balancing weights. Thanks for watching.